What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fye here for my five and five, five, top five plays of the day in five minutes. As you guys know, I share more. You can see my screen right now. Please give us the like, the thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And uh, check out TrueDFS.com. We've made a lot of changes to the site, as well as uh, very active and very interesting and uh, a lot of intelligent DFS players in our Discord. So check that out. Let's start it off. This is a weird slate because it seems like every five minutes we keep hearing somebody else is going to be out. So I'm trying to, you know, these are early thoughts. So you got to just bear with me here and, and I'll be live at 545 Eastern to clean things up a little bit. Um, Justice Winslow and um, Dunn should pick up a lot of the work from Hart being out in a game that they probably can stay somewhat competitive in. That's a huge knock on wood because I don't even know if that's possible for this Portland team and even in Detroit. But uh, I really like both Winslow and Dunn quite a bit. And I think Winslow is the guy in the middle tier I feel a little bit better about, but Dunn definitely um, without heart there. It does have the upside in the minutes if the minutes can get up to in the 28 range. So I do like both of those guys, but we're probably going to get some other value that might open up Dunn's part of that. Uh, with the news of Marcus Smart and Robert Williams sitting out, uh, that it does make me like uh, the entire Celtics team, basically. But in order, I have it as White, Horford, Brown, and Tatum. Um, and you can see I have that on, on FanDuel as well. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't think that you want to play all of these guys by any means, but I think White and Horford particularly stand out as, as getting some somewhat of a bump here. So uh, White will probably be in a good portion of my DraftKings lineups as well as my FanDuel lineups and Horford and Brown. Um, I'm sorry, Horford will be more on FanDuel, but some on DraftKings and then Brown followed by Tatum. I think they're all really strong plays against the weak OKC team. Obviously, if Shea's out, it makes it a little bit less interesting outside of White because I'm not sure how close that game stays. So we'll have to see what happens there. Then we've got LeBron revenge, um, not revenge, LeBron going back to Cleveland, which is just a, a, a good time to take a shot on a guy who's playing a very narrative based sort of DFS season. And uh, also they need him to do everything. So I think he's a really strong play. Luca is always a really strong play. Uh, does have a little bit of a downtick in terms of fantasy production since we've had uh, Spencer Dinwiddie added to the roster when, when Dinwiddie and uh, Brunson both play. But I still think he's obviously a strong play. And then you get Harden with what it looks like Embiid might be out. Um, assuming Embiid is out, I think that Harden's a really strong play. And we probably want to get a little bit more exposure to that Philly side of things. Maybe even the Miami side is a little bit more appealing. Uh, not, not, they're not going to be good as, as good defensively in Philly with uh, DeAndre Jordan uh, out there. Uh, DDR, Vooch, and Levine. Uh, one of these three bowls will probably be in most of my lineups. I think they're all very strong plays. Uh, right now, I'm leaning... So the, for the somewhat cheaper ones in Vooch and Levine, but I have no problem. I think DeRozan is actually the best play of them all, but he's just a little bit more pricey. And once we get to his price range, I do like some other guys, but I think you want to include them on both sites in a good portion of your lineups. Uh, Darius Garland, CJ McCollum, Shea Gilders Alexander, and Donovan Mitchell I have in one tier. Garland and McCollum being by far my favorite. Uh, that's what I meant when I said spending up for the DDR. Like, I think I'd rather still play Garland, although it's kind of close. And I, McCollum and D versus DDR, a little bit of a different price, but I, I do think that they're both, you know, very interesting, but love all these guys. I do think that if SGA plays, he's a strong play that low ownership, Donovan Mitchell obviously can go off and it is a back-to-back -back for those guys. So just keep that in mind. But I really do like the Garland and McCollum side of it, especially not a whole lot different early in the day on FanDuel and may change later in the day. So you can see, I basically have everything the same Kyle Lowry. Uh, I, I love Lowry, Lowry revenge going back to not even revenge, Lowry going back home to Philly. Uh, Villanova kid, you know, this is uh, something that's worked for us in the past, and I am happy to go back to it. I also do have Jimmy Butler, do like Jimmy Butler in a little bit of that, uh, going back to the team that sort of got rid of him. And uh, I think that there's some upside for, for, for both those guys here, but I, I'm definitely signing a little more with Lowry on FanDuel because of the 5,700 price tag. Uh, Patrick Beverly, I have included on FanDuel, which I should have, I could have probably included on, on DraftKings as well. A uh, strong point per minute guy got ejected. So it sort of messes with his recent numbers, but had been well in the thirties uh, recently, you know, recently he's only 5k on FanDuel. So I think that's interesting. I think Tobias Harris is more interesting over here at 5,500, especially if Embiid is out. And uh, obviously we have still have the LeBron Harden, Luca KD range, a little easier to get two of these guys on FanDuel. But mostly I have the sites as fairly similar early in the day on a kind of a tricky slate. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I will be live at 545 Eastern time here on the True DFS channel. Good luck to everyone out there tonight. I hope you guys crush it and let's make some money.